So going through this air cold train, the problem he's having is every time the compressor C tries to run on these cool mornings, it's tripping on a high pressure, and this circuit is cycling uh, significantly when it shouldn't. Um, everything I've seen so far, this thing started at a really high um, starting amp. And, uh, and and when I got here, we had compressor uh, B on the other side online. And it, uh, it was running fine without any issue. And then we locked that out to bring C on, the one that's been tripping the codes. And it ran for probably 10, 15 minutes. And then it cycles off on temperature. And it never, I, on the amperage, on the compressor, I never saw it unload on the amperage. It locked in, it was at, you know, full load amps uh, the entire time. On top of starting at almost full load amps on startup. So all of that's leading me back to our unloader here. Um, I'm, we're about to troubleshoot this and see what's going on. You see a little bit of a leakage there. Um, but anyway, we're, we... There it goes. Let's see what it says. Yep, it's already up there. This shouldn't do it that fast. RLA is 165. So what we're going to do next is we're going to monitor that temp because we saw it take a nose dive and that amperage does not unload I just that's, that's that final confirmation I'm looking for that something's going on either with the unloader or the controls are not telling it to unload which I kind of doubt it's the controls unless that relay over here is bad because that unloads through these wires here that's what controls those loaders That's our entering. That's our leaving water. It's still going up. We're at 46. 46 is set point. It should be backing off more than that. Let's see what it does. We're locked in at set point. We're still kind of loading back up again. I don't think it's actually loading. I think the pressures are building in the system. I'm hearing the quick, but I'm not getting the magnetism on the cylinder. You got no magnetism? No. Wow. I don't know. We'll give it a second. I don't want to jump the gun. We just staged up on condenser fans, so we're building that head pressure. Just trying to keep the head pressure down. That's the starting amps. And there we go. So right there, now that we're at 45, we should be backing off significantly. So we're at 45 on leaving. It's got to come down more than that. 
That's not that's not enough. All right, let me put some hands on. I'll check back in. All right, so we that temperature just continued going down. It was at 43 just a second ago, 43, 42, where it cycles at. We never got below 140 amps on that compressor. So we're gonna get our get some magnets out. These solenoids are trying to activate, but um, you know we actually got some magnetism on them, but uh, they're just they're just not doing it. And you can tell you can just tell that's been leaking. So that's another thing we need to address. Anyway, so that's where we're at now. We need to troubleshoot these on loaders. See if we can get that slide valve to operate. If not, that's that's going to be our problem. Is the unloading. All right. So with that test, we did confirm unloaders. Uh, the, the, the slide valve in there is stuck. Uh, we unplugged the magnets at the controller so they wouldn't be energized. Um, uh, the, um, the solenoids, we unplugged the solenoids at the controller, left them to dangle, and we put the magnet on it. Didn't matter which way we went with it, whether to load or unload. My amperage never changed, nothing about the system ever changed. It was locked in. So, what's happening here is that, it, that explains the, the uh, short cycle, right? This compressor can't unload to match the building load. So it's overcooling, it has to shut down. Um, and, and it was doing that when this compressor was lead. It cycles these compressors, compressors based off of runtime, so they all wear equally. And then, the reason he was tripping high pressure on these cool mornings, which for us, you know, 40s to lower 50s, is this chiller does not um, does not convert or does not actually have a pressure transducer what it does it takes a temperature reading on the discharge and converts that discharge reading into a into a pressure based off of the temperature of the refrigerant so um, you know it's using a PT chart for that built into the controls so in the early mornings when it first goes to start up all the pipes all the coils everything's nice cool cold the pressure in the system is building up too fast because we're not unloaded and we can't unload but it's building up so fast as the the sensor the temperature sensor does not see the pressure increase fast enough to turn more fans on but the pressure the high pressure switch is reading actual pressure so the pressure builds, it takes a second for the temperature to build. The pressure builds faster than the temperature on the sensor. So no, the fans don't come on with it. And when the fans don't come on, the high pressure switch trips because it, it doesn't know that it's a high pressure because the temperature is not hot enough. Hope I was able to make that clear. That, that's how it works. If that didn't make sense, I'd recommend just wait, rewinding, hearing that a couple of times over. Anyway, so what we're going to do, we're going to recommend redo, uh, replacing the uh, the slide valve control, and the um, and I'm going to go ahead. These these uh, solenoid valves are also pretty aged. We're just going to play it safe. Recommend both of those as well. Um, and yeah. Takes, takes care of that call, so we're going to lock out circuit C, and uh, or, or circuit 2, leave circuit 1 enabled, and it'll be able to take care of the load until we get repairs done on circuit 2.